Hey, what's up guys? It's Fruity. Welcome back to the fourth episode of Let's Play Mega Man Rolling Cutter Only. Now, I know I said in this episode that I was going to head into Dr. Wily's Fortress, but we actually have unfinished business in Electman stage. We still have to pick up that power up there, which I skipped over last time, as well as showing off the other routes you can take through the level, because, you know, you could go left or right previously. So let's switch out to the rolling cutter. Oh, right. I had to, um... Uh, what's the word? Um, restart my uh, emulator between episodes, and I forgot to put the infinite weapons code back in. Uh, oops. It should be okay, though. I don't think I'll have to use so much of the rolling cutter that it'll run out of energy before I'm done with this episode, and of course I'll remember to um, fix it for next episode. But um, yeah, so back there you could see where they reused the screen, but designed it quite differently in quite a clever way, and you could um, climb down the ladder back there to pick up the health. That's what that other ladder's use became. Uh, and these watches are still annoying. But yeah, at least now you can see what it looks like for the weapon energy to be depleted for the various weapons. Rolling Cutter uses one bar for every use, and since there's 28 bars, you get 28 uses of it, typically. Oh, come on, man. Let me up the disappearing blocks. Nah, this is just cool. This is just cool. I don't usually have this much trouble. What's going on? What is actually going on? That's like the fourth attempt. Seriously? I think I'm jumping too late, actually. Okay. There we go. This time I'll go up the right and show you the uh, quote-unquote proper way, as opposed to the, the crazy jump you can do on the left side. There you go, very simple, very simple. See, as I mentioned, don't try and get the health here. More trouble than it's worth, really, in all honesty. <laughs> but now we get to the interesting part of the stage, because I'm going to take a different route this time. Last time I took the uh, left route, this time I'm going to take the right route. So the right route is the one I typically take, because I don't have to deal with those um, spines over there on the left side. Because usually I wouldn't be using uh, weapons, so I wouldn't be able to kill them. Uh, I'm just gonna have to tank some hits here, I think. Uh, yeah, okay. One hit, that's not so bad. Oh, by the way, um, you can move this block here. I'll explain that um, once we get to pretty much the next screen. So yes, there's the power-up, and we have blocks here. So how do we get rid of these blocks? There are two ways. One way is Gutsman's weapon. Which seems very useless at first, I'm pressing the fire button and nothing happens, but it lets you pick up these blocks and throw them. So, you need to have beaten Gutsman first before you can get this. However, you can also use a Lechman's own weapon. This is what a Lechman's weapon use, uh, looks like. It shoots electricity out in three directions, it has a giant hitbox, it's pretty much the most powerful weapon in the game. And you can also use it to get this power up here. However, that would obviously require revisiting the stage, so you have to fight Gutsman before Lechman if you actually want to get this power up on the first run through the stage. For a first time player, I'd recommend just doing Cutman first, then Lechman, because he's weak to Cutman, and then just revisiting Lechman's stage to the power up. That way you can use it in Gutsman's stage, because it's oh so important in Gutsman's stage. It is the magnet beam, it lets you create a platform for you to stand on. If you tap it, it shoots out a small platform. If you hold it down, it creates a long platform, and you can jump and fire it at the same time. So you can basically be like a really crazy superhero with this. I don't know, I'm thinking of Spider-Man for some reason, but this really isn't anything like Spider-Man. I, I don't know if he could create like horizontal webs and walk on them. Um, never seen him do that before. <laughs> but it's incredibly useful. This is a very almost broken power. It's extremely overpowered in lots of cases, and you can use it to skip the footholders in Iceman's stage, which is very useful, particularly considering Iceman is weak to a Lechman's weapon. You really want to do the stage before Iceman. And then if you opt to revisit the stage instead of doing Gutsman first, you can then use the Magnet Beam to skip the platform to the start of Gutsman's stage. While I'm here, I might as well show the other weapons off. This is Fireman's weapon, the Firestorm. It's very powerful, it shoots out a shot that does about twice as much damage as a regular Mega Buster shot, and it puts a shield around you which one hits any enemies that are really weak, so it makes you pretty much impervious to anything around you, so it's a good last resort. 
Of course, I've already shown off the Mega Buster itself. It's a regular horizontal shot. You can't shoot it vertically or diagonally, or just horizontally. So you have to jump if you want to get it on different levels. Here's Iceman's weapon, the Ice Slasher works the same way. You can only shoot it horizontally and only one shot at a time. It freezes enemies, it doesn't damage most enemies, but after freezing an enemy with it, you can switch to another weapon to um, then damage it when it's incapacitated. Finally, here's the Hyper Bomb. It is as useless as it looks. <laughs> it throws out a bomb, it waits a couple of seconds, then it blows up. It does quite heavy damage, but it has such a delay on it that it's so freaking useless. Like, it's... It's almost the worst weapon in the entire Mega Man series, I'm not even kidding. Um, I'd say probably second worst, may maybe even worse. Like, Guts Man's weapon is pretty useless because you can only use it when there's blocks around, but I'd still say Hyper Bomb is worse because, well, Guts Man's weapon, which is uh, called the Super Arm by the way, is at least useful in certain situations. Like, when there are blocks, it's quite powerful. But anyways, let's show off the right path, which I didn't show off last time. So yeah, that brick there, that's another brick you can pick up with a super arm if you wanted to switch sides. Like if you decide you don't want to go up the right side, you want to go to the left side. And there was another one of those earlier too, if you wanted to uh, switch sides. So this right side is actually s probably slightly easier than the left side. But you have to have the magnet beam if you go this way. Uh, you'll, need, you'll need Guts Man's weapon to pick this block up and throw it away. And then you'll need the magnet beam to get up here, so... You're pretty much screwed if you go up the right side without picking up the magnet beam. You'll have to go all the way back down and go through the left side again, which is uh, pretty unfortunate, isn't it? Now, I could either finish the stage now, or I could get myself a game over. A uh, game over is probably better, because I'm on zero lives, and um, I kind of want to get my lives back before I go into Dr. Wily's castle. So, yep, you know what? Kill me, big guy. You can kill me for once. I don't care. Okay, you didn't, you didn't kill me. Okay, let's go on the last corridor to get killed then. There's, there's traps there, I suppose. You've already seen a Lek, man. I don't need to fight him again. Do I? Do I? I don't, I don't know. Do you, do you want me to fight a Lek, man, again? I'm actually, I'm actually half tempted to fight him again. I don't know. I'll hit him twice, and then I'll let him kill me. Because who can be bothered killing him again? I've, I've already killed him once. It's good enough. But... We climbed the whole Tower of Power again, so I guess that's something. Let's see. Oh, well, that wasn't even an intentional death. But whatever, I don't care, it doesn't matter. As you can see, it really does do 10 damage to him, the uh, rolling cutter, so... I don't want to don't want to hit continue. <laughs> But anyway, now, now that we have the Magnet Beam, we are fully equipped, we have all six weapons and the one utility power-up. We are ready to take on the big man himself, Dr. Wily. Let's go, my friends, let's go. There he is, the evil doctor himself. Clear points, always 200,000. It's a lot. And this is probably the whiniest sound effect in video game history. It's, um, pretty ear-piercing. <laughs> Yes, he gets into a big frickin' red UFO and flies off. It's a, a blue UFO in later games. That's one of the small things they change. So here we are outside Dr. Wily's castle in the courtyard or the, the outer gardens. And unfortunately, we have big eyes to deal with. And, yep, they're pretty awful. I'm just gonna have to rely on the jump RNG here. Damn it. <laughs> because I really can't effectively kill these guys with the rolling cutter. The best strategy is to freeze them with the Ice Slasher and then use one of your other weapons to take them down quickly. Mega Buster works well enough. So here is a forced weapon usage. You can either use Super Arm or the Thunder Beam, Lechman's weapon, to um, get rid of these blocks. You have to get get rid of at least three of them. Um, these fire beams here, you can freeze with the Ice Slasher to make it easier, but obviously I can't do that because this is rolling cutter only, so instead I have to do some really clutch jumps here. And I'm really low in health already, so this isn't good. And I'm dead. <laughs> what a start, man. See, this is what Big Guy does to you when you can't just freeze him with the Ice Slasher really easily. He wrecks you, basically. Please do a high jump. Please do a high jump. Thank you, good sir. Thank you so much. But, uh, yeah, I do rather like how we actually have to, like, break into Wily's castle by um, getting rid of those blocks out the front. It's, uh, it's a bit of a neat touch, really. You don't really see anything quite like that in later Mega Man games where you're actually like invading Wily's castle. Often you'll just start inside the castle. Oh, well not, not really. In, in 2 and 3, 
yeah, in two and three, you go into the castle. You don't break in like that. You just go from outside to inside. In four, how does it work? No, in four, you just start inside the castle, as you do in five, and I think in six too. Oh, god damn it! That jump. It's getting to me, man. It's getting to me. How many, how many lives am I on? I think. Yep, we're suiciding. I'm, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not dealing with zero lives for this, this wily stage one. How annoying. Oh, I neglected to mention that if you game over, you lose your um your score up the top. But who cares about score? Like I mentioned, it's completely meaningless. Still, it's pretty cool if you can get a million points by the end of the game. Which isn't actually that hard as long as you don't game over at all. You can usually get about 1,200,000 on average if you don't game over throughout the whole game uh, all right come on big guy no well only one big guy hit that's pretty standard it's really awful if you get hit by all three of them which will result in you dying but, oh yeah but yeah another reason w which makes gutsman's weapon quite useless is that if the blocks are just in the way like that you could just use a lecherman's weapon instead to get rid of them so, you know, that whole utility of it is uh, pretty useless as well. I'd still say the Super Arm is better than the Hyper Bomb, though. I mean, the Hyper Bomb is more versatile because you can actually use it whenever you want, but the Hyper Bomb is just so awkward to use that it's just it's, it's insane. Can I, can I please make this jump? This is actually stupid. Wow. Just wow. This is what Big Eye can do to you. It's just, oh god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to kill myself again, aren't I? Yep, zero lives. Well, it was nice knowing you. Rip in peace, Mega Man. Rip in peace. So yeah, that's how you can use a Lechman's weapon instead. Either way, you're gonna have to use a weapon three times there, so... Yeah, that's the minimum number of non-rolling cutter... Forced non-rolling cutter shots I have to do. There we go, finally. Those jumps are not as hard as I made them look. They're not easy. I'm not going to lie, they're not easy, but they're not that hard. Oh, jeez. Getting as health here can be pretty annoying, and then making the jump back if you fail is even worse, because you have to get really close to the edge, because you do not want to jump too high there. You really don't. Probably better just to use the magnet beam to help you, but you don't want to use the magnet beam too much. Come on, I want this health really badly. There we go. Yeah, sometimes I can get that in one shot, sometimes it takes me a few attempts. It's a bit of a lottery, really, making those jumps where you have, you know, a, a low roof overhead. They're definitely the toughest part of um, Mega Man, the low roofs. So again, three blocks, three forced uses. Um, I could go get that health up there if I wanted to with... You actually need the Thunder Beam to break those ones, because you need to get... Because you can't actually reach it with Gutsman's super arm. Because you'd have to use the magnet beam to get up there, but you can't be standing on the magnet beam platform and use the different weapons. So, yeah, you'd actually have to use the thunder beam to break those blocks, then use the magnet beam to get up there. However, I'm not going to do that because that would entail using weapons other than the rolling cutter when I don't absolutely have to in order to progress. So, you know, I want to keep this as rolling cutter exclusive as possible, basically. And here we are, the worst part of the stage. Footholders! Yes, they decided it was a good idea to let these bozos come back. Luckily, this time there's only four of them, unlike the eight in Iceman stage, but they can take you right up into the spikes on the roof. This time I got lucky. Honestly, they're not as bad as the ones in Iceman stage, but still pretty awful. So this room, this is a forced magnet beam room. You absolutely need the magnet beam to do this. So if you missed it in the Lechman stage, you have to game over and go back. Not the best game design. Again, Mega Man 1 is a little bit rusty. If you run out of Magnet Beam Energy on the left side over there, you can drop down that hole just on the other side here, and it'll take you down to this screen where there is some weapon energy, which always respawns no matter how many times you get it. So if I get this now, and then I uh, climb all the way back up here again, and then I come back down... It is there again. Again, that is a glitch in this game, or not necessarily a glitch, just something the developers, you know, didn't change by make. They just made it so power-ups constantly respawn every time you scroll them back on screen, which is not the case in later Mega Man games. However, it is very important so that you don't have to force yourself into needing a game over here. Oh, I screwed that up. That's annoying. You can get up here with only two magnet beams. 
I want to try and do it. It's pretty, pretty tricky. You can get up here with only two magnet beam uses. And there it is. Yeah, I know, I used magnet beam more than was necessary, so does that void the rolling cutter only run? You know what, I don't freaking care. I know I could do it if I really wanted to, you know. Please don't hold it against me. You'd have to be, you would have to be extremely pedantic to hold it against me for using more magnet beams than necessary there. Then again, this is the guy that did a no-spin run of Crash Bandicoot 1 and made sure to count every single spin and, like, was very pedantic over the counting and everything and figuring out all the possible places you could skip spinning. Anyway, this is Yellow Devil, the first boss of the Wily Fortress, and an incredibly infamous boss, and I'm going to die to him probably in a moment because I am not concentrating. In fact, I'm going to suicide because this is not enough health for me to feel confident. Because there is a checkpoint right outside the door. Anyway, so Yellow Devil, incredibly infamous boss. Um, some people consider him the hardest boss in Mega Man history, which I disagree with. The blobs as they fly across the screen are incredibly fast, I will admit that, I'll, I'll admit that, but they are always flying across the screen in the exact same pattern. Once you have the pattern memorized, and then have it memorized in your muscle memory after that, it becomes incredibly easy. Except I can't freaking hit him for some reason, stop doing that yellow devil, please stop. Um, yeah, I would not even consider this guy in like the top three hardest bosses in the game. I still wouldn't say he's easy, even after you get really good at him, like, oh, no, I would say he's easy, but I wouldn't say he's, like, bomb man easy, or cut man easy, or, you know, stuff like that. He's still a reasonable challenge, but you just have to stay concentrated, that's all. You really can't slack off during this fight, but as long as you stay concentrated, it's really not hard. His uh, weakness is the Thunder Beam, which does 4 damage, so you kill him in 7 hits. Um, he also kills you in 7 hits, so you do have to get reasonably good at dodging the attack. You have to get like at least one wave where you don't get hit at all. Otherwise, it's best to take one hit and run behind him where the uh, blobs can't hit you. Uh, rolling Cutter unfortunately seems to only do 2 damage to him, which is the same as the Mega Buster, so yeah, that's gonna be annoying. But with the Mega Buster, sometimes you can't hit him because he opens his eye too high. <laughs> that rhymed, but, you know, whatever. He just opens it, too, opens it too high for you to hit, and it's really inconvenient. But the rolling cutter has a bit of an upward arc, so I should be able to hit his eye, no matter where it is. So this should be actually easier with the rolling cutter than with the Mega Buster, and yeah, it's proving to be a little easier so far. This fight usually takes quite a long time with just the Mega Buster, because he often opens that eye very high up. Yeah, the pattern is very simple. I'll teach you how to dodge it. I, I just purely dodge it based on muscle memory. Like, this might I might make this look easy, but if you haven't played this game before and you try this yourself, it will seem insanely difficult. Like, I'm not kidding. It'll feel like it's impossible to dodge. But it just takes practice. And if you really want a good way of memorizing it, you just have to get a good rhythm and count the blobs you have to jump over, really. So here we go. So one jump. And I screwed it up. We'll count off the next one. Yeah, I'm still not impervious to screwing this up. Particularly considering I have to do live commentary over this. So one jump, two jump, three jump, double jump, four jump, and the short hop. Let's reiterate that again. One jump, two jump, three jump, the double jump, four jump, short hop. See? That's all you have to remember. It's still hard even once you remember that, but practice it for maybe half an hour and you'll get it in your muscle memory. I mean, you'll be constantly gaming over and going back to the start of the stage. That's probably the most annoying part about it. I wouldn't hold it against you too much to just put a save state at the start of the Yellow Devil fight um, if it's your first time playing the game. I really wouldn't because, like, as long as you've gotten really, really good at beating the stage, I wouldn't hold it against you because you know you can beat the stage at that point, and it just seems sort of pointless and annoying to have to go back to the start every single time. But don't save state, like, during the fight or anything. That's a little bit little bit cheap, to be honest. There is an exploit you can um, do to beat Yellow Devil like, extremely easily, and you can actually use that exploit for pretty much every boss in the game, but it's most, most infamous for its use against the Yellow Devil. I'll probably show that off in a little bit of an extras video. But yeah, we defeat Yellow Devil, and here we are, touched down in the second Dr. Wily stage, which uses the same music as the first Wily stage. Really good music. Um, my fifth favorite in the game, after those four Robot Master themes that are really good. It's it's a rather epic theme, but a, a little a little repetitive. I'll I'll admit it's it's still really good though. Definitely a good enjoyment in it. 
But uh, we'll, bring, we'll bring the episode to a close here. Um, hopefully you'll join me next time. You've got a bit of a preview here of what the second Wily stage looks like. And uh, we'll tackle it next time. So this is Fruity, signing off.